Well, hello and happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of the women who are watching, the mothers, the grandmothers, uh, the aunties, the spiritual mothers. I just love to bless you today on this very special day. And I would like to make a very special mention to all of the aunties. Uh, in the scriptures, in John 19, 25, is this beautiful little verse. And it says, near the cross of Jesus, when Jesus was on the cross on Good Friday, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when I first noticed this little verse, I thought to myself, oh my goodness, Jesus' auntie was there at the foot of the cross. And so to all of the aunties who are also watching over the spiritual journey of your nieces and nephews and those children in your lives, may the Lord bless you. And uh, also a big hello to my own auntie, Auntie Audrey. May the Lord bless you too. So today we are learning together about the Holy Spirit. And of course, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity and uh, he is the sending spirit. So he is the one that Jesus said that he would send. God, our heavenly father, uh, sent his son Jesus. Of course, the very famous scripture, John three sixteen, says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Some versions say, uh, who sent his only son. So God sent his son, and because he sent his son, we receive the free gift of salvation when we believe in the Lord Jesus and all that he has done for us. Jesus, in turn, sent the Holy Spirit. John 20 at 21, on the day that Jesus rose from the dead and appeared to his disciples, he said to them, again, Jesus said, peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. So this is Jesus' words to us that not only was he sent by his Father in heaven, but the Holy Spirit is sent to us in order that we are then in turn sent out into all of the earth to speak this good and wonderful news about Jesus. Everything that Jesus did was in the power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to his disciples for a period of 40 days. We know this from Acts 1-3, where it says this very specifically, that Jesus appeared to his disciples over this period of 40 days. And then it goes on to say in Acts 1-4, on one occasion, while Jesus was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. So uh, Jesus ascended into heaven on the 40th day, and so the disciples did, they waited. And so 10 days later, as the disciples were waiting, but they didn't know for what, there were 120 of them gathered together in one place, which um, also occurred on the day of the Feast of Pentecost, which is a Jewish feast, and Pente means 50. So it's 50 days after Passover, and they were all gathered together. So if we read in Acts 2, 1 to 6, it says this, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And so this was the birth of the Christian church. This occurred when the Holy Spirit came on the believers and there was this supernatural event that there, there was fire above them, uh, which was visible. And so fire in the scriptures is often a symbol of the divine presence of God, but it was also a fire that did not consume. And it said that there was fire and each had a, a tongue of fire that rested above their head, which would have been, oh my goodness. Um, so it was on each of them, not one of them missed out. It was on all 120 of them. And so this fire came above them. Then there was also the wind, which was audible to all. So they could all hear the wind. It said that it's a violent wind, but not only the disciples, but all of the people around nearby could hear it as well. Cause it says that they came running to see what was happening. 
And then it says that they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues. So for the disciples, this was a language that they'd not known before. And so they were speaking. And uh, when we read this account, there's at least 16 different languages that is mentioned by name because other people came, they'd come from many places and they could understand what the disciples were saying. In Acts 2.11, it says that they were, we can hear them declaring the words of God in our own language. So what a phenomenal event this was and also slightly confusing because it had never happened before. Uh, and then after this, it says that Peter stood and addressed the crowd with great power and authority with revelation of God's word. And so then he began to talk about the prophet Joel and a particular scripture that he said had been fulfilled this very day, and uh, which is talked about in Acts 2.14 in the following verses. And it says that 3,000 people were added to the church that day, which meant that 3,000 people were born again that day. They were baptised that day, baptised in the Holy Spirit, and it was a big day, a lot happening. But this was the day that the church, the Christian church, was birthed in this worshipping ministry and the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'd just like to set in context the two different works of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. So firstly, just to set your heart at rest, every believer has the Holy Spirit. Uh, we know this because on uh, the very first day that Jesus rose from the dead on Easter night, on Easter Sunday night, he uh, came into a locked room with his disciples and he talked to them about receiving the Holy Spirit. So if we look at John 20 at verse 19 to 22, we have this story of Jesus. It says, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked, for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. So they knew that Jesus was alive. They saw his hands where the nails had been and the side where the sword had pierced his side. And then Jesus says this to them. Again, Jesus said, verse 21, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So here we have this moment where actually the disciples were born again. For you and I and every believer, we are born again when we believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we believe in our heart that Jesus died on the cross to take the penalty of our sin, when we believe this and that he rose again and that we have this belief and faith and trust in our heart, the scriptures tell us that that's when we are born again. So for the disciples, this was the moment that they were born again, the moment that Jesus had talked about in John 3. So they received this Holy Spirit from Jesus. So this was the great regenerating work of the Holy Spirit, which we know about from Romans 8, 11 to 17. And this little story where Jesus breathed on them, it parallels when our heavenly father breathed life into Adam in the story of creation. He breathed life into him, them. And so this was uh, the first creation. And then Jesus breathes on his disciples for the new creation. So this was when they were born again, the new birth. So this is the moment. And for all of us, when we are born again, we receive this same thing from Jesus, the Holy Spirit. The second work of the Holy Spirit was on Pentecost, which Jesus spoke about. He told them to be prepared for. So his born again disciples, he told them to wait for this. And this is on Pentecost when the work of God's spirit as a spirit of power uh, enabled the disciples of Jesus for ministry, to witness, for service, and to fulfill their mission to, of, to the world. You see, the primary purpose of baptism in the Holy Spirit is to be an effective witness. That's why. That's why there's this work of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 1.8, Jesus said this when he was, before he ascended, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. 
We need to remember with baptize, baptism in the Holy Spirit that it is Jesus who is the baptizer. It's mentioned in all four Gospels where John the Baptist says one who is greater than he is will come and will baptize each one in the power of the Holy Spirit. So this is what Jesus was talking about. Uh, I was, um, I remember I was born again when I was 14, many years ago now, and uh, I was at a conference and for the first time ever I actually heard the Gospel explained and I actually heard someone explain what was necessary in order to be born again. I'd never heard it before. I'd grown up in a, in a church, but no one had ever mentioned that you could be born again. No one ever said that you actually needed to be. And so this was the first time I'd ever heard this. And I remember it so captured my heart, but particularly this offer of forgiveness that Jesus died on the cross for me and then I would receive forgiveness for my sin and that I would be born again. And there was an altar call and uh, people were asked to raise their hands and I did. And then back in those days, they used to make you come to the front. And so I went to the front and uh, two people prayed for me and they led me through a prayer um, called a sinner's prayer and where I asked for forgiveness for my sin and I said that I believed in Jesus and I received Jesus into my heart. And I remember just being filled with joy. I was so happy. And then the people who were praying for me said to me, would you like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Now, I didn't really understand this. I had heard of it. I had heard of the gift of tongues. I'd heard of baptism in the Holy Spirit, but I didn't really know what it meant. And so then these beautiful people laid their hands on me and prayed for me. And uh, I did receive this baptism in the Holy Spirit. It was such a significant moment for me. I had this deep awareness of the presence of God, of the Holy Spirit, and I was filled with joy, but also I began to pray in tongues. And so it was such a moment in my life that I've never forgotten the, the moment when that happened. The dilemma for me was that I lived in a little country town, and so we went back home, and uh, there was no other person in our area or district who'd ever experienced anything like this. So other members of my family were baptised in the Holy Spirit. And so we didn't know what to do. So we just went back to the church we'd been going to with this experience that had happened in our heart. And it just kind of sat there. And uh, every now and again, I would practise tongues to see if I could still do it. Oh, yeah, I could still, can still do it. But I didn't know what it was for. And then five years later, when I was 19, I moved to Adelaide and I thought, right, I'm going to do something about this. And I found a group of believers and who were also filled with the Holy Spirit. And then I really began to grow. From that experience, I realised, because I had this five-year gap, that it was, it was the baptism in the Holy Spirit, but also joined with studying and reading and having others explain the scriptures to me because previously I didn't even have a Bible and fellowship with others. It was the three things together that actually really helped me to grow. And so as I began to grow in the Lord, I began to learn the benefits, but also what the baptism in the Holy Spirit really meant. So in the scriptures with baptism in the Holy Spirit, it says that we are given gifts from the Holy Spirit. And there's a list in 1 Corinthians 8.10, which is not an exhaustive list, but it is a list. And so it says that there's the gift of wisdom, gift of word of knowledge, of faith, of healing, of miracles, of prophecy, discerning of spirits, tongues and interpretation of tongues. And so I began to learn that it wasn't just tongues, there were other gifts as well. And I began to move in these kind of things uh, because of the gracious gift of the Lord. So really, why? Why is it? Why? Why do we need to be baptised in the Holy Spirit? If you've already got the Holy Spirit, we're born again, why? Um, in the scriptures in Corinthians, it says that it's through this that we're equipped, uh, enabled to demonstrate God's power, but also importantly to build up the body of Christ. So nobody has all of the gifts, but between all of us, there all of the gifts are present. And so it helps to build the body of Christ and it helps to show the power of God. Then our question would be, well, who? Who is it for? So on the day of Pentecost, um, Peter addressed the crowd with great power and he read from the prophet Joel. And it says in verse 11 that he read this from the prophet Joel at verse 17. So it's in Acts 2, 17 to 18. In the last days, God says, 
I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. From this scripture, we know that this is for all people. It's not just for some people. It's actually a gift from God, a gift of the Holy Spirit sent by Jesus that is for all people. It has a list. It says sons and daughters, young and old, men and women, all people. And so actually this gift of the Holy Spirit this and the gifts of the Holy Spirit is actually available for all. And I can only speak from my own experience, but I do know that it changed things for me. I do know that it brought me into this wonderful place with the Lord that I just would never want to lose or exchange. And this gift is actually available for all. In the Bible, it says that we are to eagerly desire these gifts, but also to receive. And so I would love to pray for you because remembering that baptism in the spirit is from Jesus. He's the baptizer. And in the scriptures, some people received baptism in the Holy Spirit when uh, the apostles or disciples laid hands on them and prayed for them. Other times they received uh, baptism in the Holy Spirit when they were just simply listening to someone preaching and other times just the Holy Spirit fell on them. And I've known throughout all of the years that I've been walking with Jesus that many Christians have, it's been different for many. Some have had someone lay hands on them, remembering Jesus is the baptizer, not a person. Others have just received it at home on their own. But the common factor is that we eagerly desire the gifts and that we trust in Jesus, remembering that this comes from him and that we position our heart to receive. So I would love to pray for you if you eagerly desire the gifts or you eagerly desire a refreshing of the Lord, the Holy Spirit is here present for you. Or you may long to be baptised in the Holy Spirit. And so I'm just going to pray for you now, for all of you, that you would just receive these things from him. Lord, I just thank you that you are the baptizer. I thank you, Jesus, that you sent the Holy Spirit in order that we would be equipped. Lord, for those who eagerly desire, Lord, I ask that they, they would receive from you today. Lord, I ask for the power of your Holy Spirit to come upon them. Lord, I ask for your grace and truth. And just one last invitation. If you're watching today, and uh, this is the first time you've heard anyone talk about being born again or uh, you really long to know Jesus. Sometimes people think that in order to get to heaven or to know God, that we need to be a good person and that that's sufficient. And some people think that they could never know God because their life has been too bad. And actually both of those things are incorrect because Jesus said that he's the way to the Father. And so it's not about being good and going to heaven, it's actually about knowing Jesus. It's about giving your heart to him. And it's not about being too bad because the cross of Jesus covers our sin. So if you would like to know Jesus, it actually is about the trust in your heart. If you have a little yes in your heart today and you think to yourself, I would like to know Jesus as my Lord and Saviour, I'd love to pray for you. So I'd love you to pray this prayer with me. Father, I thank you that you sent your son Jesus. Lord, I am sorry for my sin and I thank you for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would be my Lord and Saviour. I believe that you died on the cross for me and rose again. Jesus, I ask that you would give me your Holy Spirit and make me a part of your family forever. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.